Okay, I'm back with the next installment of my G37 saga. Uh, last video was checking that I had the leads for paddle shifters. Said that I was going to go ahead and order those, and I did. They arrived today. Got two pretty decent shape used, obviously, paddle shifters. It took about a week to get here. Uh, paid a little north of $200 for them. It seems quite a bit high, but I'm sure these are in-demand items, and if you don't have them, you got to have them. So. They can charge what they want. Condition on them is pretty good. Uh, there's some minor scuffing. The uh, pads are in good shape, though. There's no wearing, really. I don't think they were used very much at all. After I put them on in a month, I probably won't be using them much either. They're just something to have. Uh, left and right one, got the blue, which is the left-hand side downshift, and the white, which is right-hand upshift. We're going to go ahead and get these put on. I've already taken the cover off of the lower column and loosened the cover on the top. There's two screws that are behind the little cover plates that you got to pop off here for the top cover. And then on the bottom, it be easier to show you because I already got it off, there is a tie bar with a couple screws underneath here. There is a beauty panel that goes between the two sides of the lower cover once that uh, you got to pop that off to get to that tie bar and then right up in here let me see where the cover's at i'll just show you then on the lower side of the cover you've got a blind screw right there that you've got to just feel around for get a phillips up in there and undo that this cover itself i did not order the uh, factory ones that have the side cutouts for the paddle shifters i'm going to attempt to uh, just modify these to flip back on and if I'm successful fantastic it'll save me maybe upwards of 50 bucks if not then I'll just drive without the lower cover until I can source the uh, factory ones I'm not too concerned about that big part is getting these installed there's two mounting points on them you've got a uh, spot here that a fat pre-installed let me see if I can turn the wheel show you oh, I should have had this started but right there is a stud that uh, that side fits over and on the back side down there there's a spot for a bolt both are m6 and uh, the nut obviously just an m6 nut the bolt you got to get if you don't have them is an m6 by 10 millimeter so two of those each side and uh, you're good to go i'm gonna go ahead and snip out the tape holding the lead on i'm gonna get these installed uh, it's so straightforward and there's other videos so i'm not gonna go step by step with the install i'm gonna go cut off here get these put on and i'll join you on the all right, they are installed. I have paddle shifters. There's the upshift, downshift, and the back side here where they were mounted. There's the bolt I mentioned, M6 by 10 millimeter. It's a 10 millimeter long bolt. Get an M6 for the size. The M6 nut that goes over the studs right there. Connector on the back side. Obviously identical on the right. You're gonna go ahead and throw it into drive here and then go to drive sport upshift goes to first it's not gonna let me go any further it's just locked in first and you can't go neutral which is kind of a kind of sucks actually It'd be nice if you could at least downshift to neutral I know that understand why they don't want you to downshift to uh, <laughs> reverse but it'd be nice if you could downshift to neutral but whatever We'll go ahead and take it for a drive and run it through the gears here in a little bit after I figure out what I'm going to do about this cover. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to modify it or not. Uh, thinking the best way to modify it would be to cut it out first down through this area, slide the paddle shifter into the hole you cut, and then just put it all back up together, but I don't know. There may be a reason why most people end up getting the separate ones. This thing's a pain in the ass to get off, just fair warning when you're doing this. Um, you have to be forceful and you may break something and you just have to go with it. Uh, just the way it is. Uh, one trick, or it's not a trick, but something I did not hear in the other videos I watched about installing these is the tilt. When it's still plugged in, before you disconnect it, tilt your wheel, or telescope it I should say, all the way to you. That gets you clearance 
to get these backside bolts in. Most people, you know, if you have a push forward halfway or more in normal driving position, you're not going to be able to reach that because it's going to be back up in here. So t telescope your steering wheel all the way out and then just rotate the wheel till you get clearance to get a socket in there, get those put on. All right, I'm going to go ahead and button the rest of this up as much as I can and uh, we'll do a little test drive. Okay, driving here, getting ready to go for the test drive. I uh, got the camera put in as best as I can. It's not a great angle, but you will at least see the action on the wheels here. Put it over to Sport, go to one, it's engaged, and here we go. There's two. It's shifting good, let's see if it downshifts here. Oh yeah, they are working. All right, so happy. All right. Second. Third. Nice. It's so different driving these cars when the, uh, the computer isn't thinking for you forcing you to shift way before you probably should for any type of reasonable performance, save fuel. I mean, I'm not knocking automatic transmissions at all, but I'm knocking just the way they mute them and neuter them to save fuel. I mean, I wouldn't want to paddle shift this thing every single day of the week, but it'd be nice if you could, and newer cars, I understand you can, you can go into heavier duty sport modes that'll really delay your shifts and sharpen them up. They had that technology back in 2012 too, and I think they could have done a better job of that. This thing has seven speeds and uses them all. It's really happy to upshift for you, very slow to downshift. Hoping when I get a tune, they can address that issue as well. Just make it sportier all the way around. Because even in sport shift mode, without doing the manual shifting, it's uh, pretty conservative. Oh, there's that sound. Hell yeah. Yeah, so my take on this is exactly what I wanted. Um, all these things I'm doing, the cold air intake, the exhaust, um, I didn't even post this and or mention it, but I did some carbon fiber trim work and got uh, consoles and door trim wrapped with some uh, silver carbon fiber. That's I've got some footage of that I'll throw in on the back side of this. A um, couple spots I want to redo, it's very novice, but um, it gave me enough confidence and it looks good enough for now that if I get time and I'm inclined I can go back and do it a lot better than I had um, The paddle shifters are the shit dude. I, I'm so happy. You know, I, I punted on them to get a G37 I had lines on some nice Mercedes 350s and a couple of SH Acuras SHAWD With paddles and those cars are roughly as fast as the G37. I just don't think they're near as tunable um, 
especially you know non turbocharged engines the the vq motor is the king uh, it, it just is the thing is just an absolute beast uh, very happy with it the paddle shifters are just the icing i mean they, they tie it all together uh, i've still got work to do i've got to do the rest of the cat back system and i have got to get the tune but everything i've done so far i've done myself and the exhaust work i'm not going to do myself i've seen enough videos with these demon bolts on the top side to get the cats off um, i want no part of it you know i work for a living and the reason to make money is to use it to get things you want and money is a tool not an objective and i plan to use that tool to get my objective <laughs> that's somebody else will tie those damn cats together for me I'm not going to tackle that um, the tune, you know, um, I'll probably get the upper ever ECU tech software and just do a mail tune and get the baseline improvement. If I can get this thing anywhere close to 300 wheel horsepower, um, I think 300 to 310 wheel horsepower without going deep into the intakes and getting a really, you know, bringing the car to a tuner shop, you know, one of the better guys that can get these things up to 320, 330 with the uh, full bolt-ons, that's, uh, yeah, I don't it's not that important you know if I factory puts out like 276 277 to the wheels from all the dyno sheets I've seen um, the bolt-ons that I've done so far probably got me a little over 280 maybe upwards of 285 horse um, get the extra 15 20 horse on a tune be super happy this thing should be a five second or better court uh, zero to 60 be mid low 13s and a quarter for a daily driver for a guy of my age um, that's just fine um, I'm not going to go street racing this thing. I just want to be able to get away from people who are pissing me off on the road. There seems to be a lot of them these days. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will keep posting as each step of this thing gets done. And the next deal is to get the either the high flow cats or straight pipes, test pipes. And then I'm going to take it to a muffler shop, and I'm going to get a, I think I'm going to get a true dual exhaust put on, um, manifold back. X piped, but a true a true dual. I think that's a, the way I want to go with it for sound and efficiency and power production. I think that's the best way to go um, is true dual. So I'll get that uh, in the works. It may take a few more weeks. It may not be another posting for a little bit, um, but this has gone great. And everybody, I want to encourage you on your cars to do the things you can do within your limits. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. As long as you're careful taking things apart. And watch what you're doing pay attention when you do it take pictures along the way to remind you of how it went back together or how it should go back together don't be afraid I mean the thing you're not going to ruin your car putting on a cold air intake you're not going to ruin your car wrapping your vinyl or your trim in carbon fiber you're not going to ruin your car putting an axle back or a cat's or a, a cat back exhaust on it as long as you're careful and you can put it back together who gives a crap it doesn't work you don't like it you revert go back to factory um, that's been my objective in this uh, further down the road just anybody that still that watches this uh, by the end of the year the goal is to have a engine to actually assemble and it's something I've wanted to do for a long time and I'm probably gonna be maybe late summer early fall hopefully that's the target once I get all this G stuff done and I don't want to start working in the winter or the summer on it when it's stupid hot and the garage you're just getting pissed off all the time weather starts to break towards this fall and something to do over the winter I'm going to be putting together a small block Chevy probably a, do like a 383 stroker on a traditional uh, first or second gen block I'm not going to do an LS for my first build but I'm going to do that 383 and I'm going to find a um, I don't know 89 to 93 94 Camaro and throw that thing in there just to have something to go around terrorizing the neighborhood so to speak um, that's my objective for later on this year the G's getting close to done um, there's some cosmetic things that I'll do uh, maybe a vinyl wrap of the front well that's stupid I don't even know why I said that um, not get a vinyl wrap the whole car but my front is stupid rock chipped it is so tore up I mean it looks like a teenager's face so many pock marks on it and maybe get some I've seen some headlights that I really dig they're LEDs and got DRLs with LEDs and uh, they just look way better than the factory ones and mine are haze and I've tried to polish them out and they've never come out right so might as well get new headlights and get the ones that are cooler and upgraded with LEDs at the same time may get the tail lights done but those will just be quick postings you know again there's five million videos on how to do all that stuff and I'll just say that I did do it I'm not gonna waste your time showing you how I did it it's kind of how I look at all this uh, if I think of something along the way that's a tip, like this telescope thing on the steering wheel when you're putting your paddle shifters on, uh, not mentioned in any of the videos I saw, but then I'm sure they did, it wasn't 
something they just didn't want to put in there. It's just something people don't think about. You know, a little omission you know, along the way. Before you unplug that harness, telescope your steering wheel out, have full access to the mounting points for these paddle shifters, put them on, rip the hell out of the car, have fun, but keep it safe, slow down around people, don't do stupid things passing people, wear your seatbelt, obey the speed limits for the most part. We all, I think, are adults, or I like to think we can all be adults and know when and where is a good time to stretch the legs of your car out, and it's not around the corner from your elementary school. Okay, that's just not the cool way to do it. So be safe, have fun, work on your own car, get help where you can, post it on YouTube because all these, I, there's people out there I want to thank. I don't, I'll never meet them. I, I will never meet these guys. These, some of these videos are five, six years old. I appreciated watching every single one of them because even if it was something minuscule, I learned it. You absorb the knowledge and you never know when it will come back in handy. So guys, work on your own stuff. Let people know you did it. Don't get tied up in how many views you get. Don't get tied up in how many people have subscribed to it. You help one person, you've helped a lot of people because that knowledge is going to get keep passing, passed down the road. So wrench on it, have fun, be safe, enjoy your car. I'll talk to you guys later.